fishing, it's fine, but hooking is the only way. We're gonna show you how to catch some fish today. So hey guys, we're gonna go fishing in San Francisco Bay. We're gonna go after halibut. Um, first, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it. Um, we're getting later in the season and a lot of those halibut are moving out of the South Bay. For a while there, it was red hot in the South Bay and where guys were catching a lot of fish in five to 15 feet of water. Well, they're starting to make their move. They're going out in the Central Bay now around Alcatraz, Angel Island, um, it, more in the central bay so we're gonna go out today and show you how i do it so let's get out there and i'll show you some tricks so some of the areas i'm fishing let's just take a good spot is angel island so what i do is i look for these little ridges um most of the time where the current pushes into um it seems to be better there on incoming tide and you want to be in depths of 25 to 55 feet of water and I just graft around till I see bait balls and then I'll stop, go up above them and then drift through. So one of the things is make sure you've got good bottom contact so that you wanna see your, your rod always on the bottom. So when the tide runs slow, I'll use anywhere from four ounces to six. As it speeds up, you might use as much as 10 ounces. But you wanna make sure that your line's almost straight down as you're drifting. And you wanna see a constant, your rod tip just constantly dragging the bottom like this and once you get a bite don't get too antsy pantsy i usually free spool it let them take it a little bit and wait till i feel them load up before i set the hook <laughs> I'll talk a little bit about the kind of equipment because it really makes a difference on your rod and reel so your rod and reel i want to use something that has a light tip on it so the line rating on the rod should be anywhere probably around 10 to 20 pound test so it'll have a light tip i like to use something that um, is about eight and a half foot so i can get a little bit of rod outside the boat because a lot of times when you're bringing them held it they'll pull you into the propeller so the other thing is you want to have a reel that holds you know i use 25 pound test so i'm using mono and you want to have something that holds at least 150 yards of line and basically that's about it on the equipment now some of the things um, i want to give you a hint when you're using live bait is the setup this is one way that i was using today so i'm directly tied the weight onto the line some days it works better and then some days it's better if you have a dropper so on the days that it has a dropper I'll use a setup like this one here. So I go to a three way and then this is the weight. So I got about maybe 18 inches on the dropper and then four feet on the leader. And this is a hook with a stinger. This one here is probably what I highly recommend and you won't miss any fish. So I'm gonna show you how to hook it up real quick. So you're gonna take the anchovy like this and you see the lower lip, you want to go through the lower lip and come up through the top and make sure it's straight. So it's going to be just like this. Then I take the treble hook and I come in the back and I bury it in one hook. So you're going to be pulling the anchovy just like this. So a lot of times when you, when you get the bite, you're going to see it tap, tap, tap. Then I usually just feed them a little line till it loads up and the rod will just bend over and then just give it a quick set and bring it in. If you use a single hook like on this other rod here, you just want to hook it through the nose. And don't forget, you got to go through the bottom lip first because if you don't go through the bottom lip and you go like this, this through the head, the anchovy's gonna mouth's gonna open like this and he'll drown so you want to go through the bottom lip and the top and try to get it as center as you can and then it'll swim natural when you're pulling it so you tie a knot first and you go back through
At least it has a loop so the bait can move. What's that? Uh, halibut. Nice one. You might Not as big as the other one. Ah, oh, oh. You can't eat it if you want to eat it. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. easy ways to hook up your bait to be very successful at it and you have to change up so this morning I was using about a 18 inch dropper and the first drip I didn't get anything so I went to the sinker right on the weight and hooked up right away and caught one about 15 pounds and why do you go right to the sinker right on the weight what's the difference uh, it's usually the way when you're pulling it on a drift if you have it on a dropper it's gonna be probably about two to three feet up when I do it on the bottom, it's probably about six inches to a foot up. So the fish might be closer to the bottom. They do feed up off the bottom too. So you want to experiment, see which way is working the best. You can look out when the tide changes, really easy to tell. We call them rip tides. So when you look out there and you see the water churning, and you'll see it going along for a long ways. That's where the water's churning. That's a really good area to fish. So a lot of times I'll get right on there and drift that line. And it's usually where there's a break because the current's pushing into it and the water's rolling. Good area. And when the current's pretty fast, like it was in some places, um, how do you know when you should just either move or change up? Like at some points we were using 12 ounces from 8 yeah. ounces. Usually if it gets where I have to use as much as 12 ounces, it's going too fast. So I'll go find somewhere where it's a little bit slower and somewhere where those fish are pushing, it's pushing into a break or pushing into a, some form of underwater structure. And that's where those suckers feed. So you could drift around many times. We had a double hook up one time because we drifted right through the school. So the schools aren't real big yet, but they are having days out here where it's real good. Oh, one of the things that's real important, if you look at your tide book and you see a minus tide in the tide books, it'll show it in red color. That means the water is gonna go really fast. And those tides, when they're fast like that, held at fishing is really bad. So usually when it, you get a minus tide, I'll stay home and wait and also the water gets dirty and usually you have high winds so you look for the it, days that you know you have a regular tide you don't have those minus tides and you'll catch more fish how do you use your fish finder to find out where to fish and where's a good spot uh, when i'm out here in the bay i use my uh, gps a lot and i'll look for the contours and i look for humps that come out off the island or like Angel Island, one of the humps that come up out there and graft around and look for bait. You'll see bait, but you, you gotta remember that water's pushing in and it goes faster and faster. Usually the turn of the tide is when it's the best and the, the action, because it's like today when the tide turned, we got multiple bites on that drift and then after that it slowed down again. So the tide when it slows down is probably one of the best times to get. And what depths were you fishing? We were fishing anywhere from 30 to 55 feet today. So one of the things guys, when you're, when I'm watching my rod, a lot of times I'll put it in a rod holder and I'll see a little tick tick, you know, like a tap. I'll pick the rod up out of the holder and I'll usually free spool it and give them a little line. And then I'll hold my thumb down and I'll wait till I feel it kind of tuck where it's not biting like this, where it's just constantly pulling. And then I'll lock the reel and wait till it goes down and set it once to where I feel it good. Reel, feel it tight. And then once I get it tight, then I bring it up really slow. And then bring him up. If he wants to pull real hard, I'll just let him pull. And then after that, I just bring him up real slow. You don't want to reel these guys up too fast. You'll lose them. So take your time when you're bringing them in. Bring them up when they get by the boat. And so they can be netted or gaffed. What size can you catch? 
halibut, the lemon on halibut, it was three earlier this year. They cut it down to two, and then they have to be minimum of 22 inches. So they have to be 22 or longer for you to keep, and the limit's two. So when you guys get these fish in the boat, uh, take a five gallon bucket, put a little water in there, dunk the fish in head first, take a knife and cut through the gill plate right here and let them bleed out. All the blood will come out of them to, and it makes the table fare a lot better. So you could cut the gills in the front and the back. You can slice it both ways that way you make sure you got it all. So I've been fishing down in the bay for quite a few years. When I was a little kid my dad used to take me and my brother and friends out and um, so today you know I just hey, called Ron and said let's go down to the bay and see if we can't catch something. So we did. We caught some nice fish today and uh, really enjoyed getting out and fishing with the family. in San Francisco Bay. Got some nice halibut today. With your brother. <laughs> What'd you catch him on? You can see who's bigger, right? What'd you catch him on? Anchovies. <laughs> How'd you do it? Live bait. Fishing is fun, but hooking is the only way. We're gonna show you how to catch some fish today. Fishing is fun, but hooking is the only way. We're gonna show you how to catch some fish today.